Oh, hey, everybody. Welcome into this Adobe Lightroom tutorial brought to you, as always, by tutvid.com. Today, we're going to jump into Lightroom and take a look at how to get sort of this, like, movie-esque cinematic type of frame here in Adobe Lightroom. We're going to go through the coloring and the tonal adjustments and the cropping and everything that we need to do to make this image look the way that it's looking. And I've got an example of the image up here on screen now, so you can give it a look at it so you know uh, what we're driving toward. And I think this will be just a cool sort of workflow and just the thoughts that are going through my head in terms of making this image happen uh, as we're working our way through it. Maybe you can apply some of these techniques in your own work. So with that in mind, make sure you subscribe to my channel if you do enjoy this video so you never miss another Lightroom or photography or Photoshop tutorial in the future. Got multiples coming out every single week that I just think you will love. And also, if you really love this tutorial and you love the content that the channel's pushing out, uh, you can go ahead and purchase my Photoshop course. It's all about how to retouch images in Photoshop. It's quick, it's easy. You use the link in the top of the video. If you're not interested, no worries. You're still invited here. You're always invited back. Let's get started with this video. So you can see here, this is the finished product. I was messing around with like a black and white version. That's kind of cool as well. Uh, but this is the original shot. This is the shot directly out of camera. Uh, and we're gonna take this and we're going to give it sort of this, you know, looks like it could be a panning shot for some, you know, big cinematic major motion picture. Um, now this was shot with fairly simple light. We just had some reflected light up here, like in the top left corner, camera left that is. Uh, and that was pretty much it. I may have even had this little light turned on, but we really didn't have too, too much going on here in terms of lighting. Uh, we just lit it very simply very softly and just let it be what it was the the room that we had gotten for the shoot uh, you can see it's a little messy up here still kind of under construction but I just love this particular part of the set because of all the old book you know shelves and the clock and everything else this kind of old grungy desk and it, it just worked I thought it looked pretty cool so we're like let's try to light something here so we did uh, now let's talk about the way that we're going to attack this image now immediately I think to avoid the distraction of all this stuff going on up here I think we should establish establish our crop first and then look at changing the light and changing the tone and texture and everything that's going on there. Uh, so what we'll do is we'll grab our crop tool. That's this first tool here in our line of tools. And over here we have our sort of, you know, this ruler icon, but we have this word aspect and then blank next to it. If we click on the blank area, we get this little pop-up menu that says, hey, you know, or what kind of crop would you like to commit? We need 16 by 9, 1920 by 1080, right? That kind of thing. No, we don't want to do that. We want to enter a custom crop and our custom crop is going to be that cinematic 2.39 by 1 so 2.39 by 1 gives us a very you know thin you know like you would see a major motion picture on the screen uh, we're going to drag this down I'm watching up here this top corner I want to make sure that I probably don't see any of the wall behind him so I just want to see books as as if books were running all the way up to the ceiling. So something like that, hit enter or return to commit your change. And you can see we already just totally changed the way that our photo looks. It looks pretty cool already. So let's begin here in the basic panel. And I think I'm gonna try to cool things down a little bit. So with my temperature slider, I'm gonna slide it back. Uh, I don't know, somewhere between 43 and 4,500. I'm at 4,450. I think that looks pretty cool. We make the scene a little bit more steely, a little bit maybe more creepy. Uh, that looks pretty neat. Uh, and then we could increase the creepiness probably by pushing a little more magenta, but maybe we'll try to almost warm it up a little bit. So we'll push the green back to like negative 40 or so. I think that's kind of neat. So now we've really almost enriched the scene. That looks pretty cool. I think it would be interesting to try to drop the exposure a little bit more. So maybe we'll drop it like a half a stop. So it goes zero, negative 0 0.5. And then to open up some of the shadows a little more, we'll also drop the contrast as well. So take that down to like negative 30. I got negative 29, whatever. We're not, this isn't an exact science. This is more of like a sweet mixed uh, science moxie here that we're playing with. Uh, highlights, we'll come back to them in a minute. I kind of really like the way, especially the highlight is falling on this clock. It's sort of very diffused. The highlights on his skin are pretty Pretty nice. There's a ton of dynamic range that's in there, so that looks pretty cool. I'm not going to mess with highlights or whites right now. I think I will boost the shadows, though. So let's boost the shadows. Maybe we'll go like plus 75 on the shadows. We can see if I double click the shadow slider to restore it to default, you can see we're just really opening up some of those shadows over there. We want to be careful. Going too high might make it look almost too grainy and fuzzy. Uh, we just want to open it up and really make the image begin to look very flat. Uh, that flat image tends to be the base of almost every cinematic image that there is out there. 
And as we're doing this, if we take a peek up here at our histogram, you can see there's still a ton of dark tone in our image. This uh, left side, or, yeah, left side of my histogram. I don't know why I'm mixing up my left and right today. Uh, this left side of my histogram, this, as you can see, indicates the blacks and the shadows. There's a ton over there still, uh, whereas our mid-tone exposure and our highlights and just bright whites, there's virtually nothing. Uh, so there's still a ton of information packed into the shadows and it's just generally a very dark image. Uh, I think I want to still, even with that in mind, drag the black slider backward a little bit just to add just a kiss of darkness to the very darkest bits of the image. Just make them darken a little bit. And I think maybe what I'll do is pull the whites up a little bit. I think I will do that. You see what that's doing? That that highlight, oh, just watch his face, right? You can see how it just changes the highlight on his face. See how it goes from kind of muted to all of a sudden it's pretty bright. Now that's way too bright. We'll just push it up to like maybe plus 25-ish. Uh, we can throw a little clarity in here. It's just going to give it a little mid-tone punch. We'll almost give the illusion of it as if the image is a little sharper. You want to be careful going too high, though. You tend to get a really kind of nasty, you know, like I might as well be editing this in, you know, I don't know, some cheap cheapo editor on an iPhone or something. Uh, so we'll go like plus eight with the clarity of uh, vibrance. I'm not going to touch. I may go in and desaturate it a little bit. Maybe like knock it down negative 15. We'll do that. So there we go. We've set our basic slider. We can always come back and adjust it later, of course. So I'm going to set the basic slider and then I'm going to move over here to my tone curve. So you may be working with what well, you may be working here with your parametric curve, uh, but I want to work with my point curve, which is this guy. So you use this little icon here in the bottom right corner of the tone curve area. And what we'll do is we'll try to lift some highlights here. So maybe what I'll even do is use a little finger scrubby tool and I'll select somewhere around the brightest parts of the image. And that part of the clock is a little bit too bright. I'll select this diffused highlight on his head and I'll just drag this upward a little bit just to increase the brightness of those areas a little bit. I can use this little on off switch right here next to tone curve to shut off my changes right before after you can see we're just pulling that up a little bit. And then I can come over to a darker part of the image. I want something somewhere right around here. Notice too, by the way, Behind the curve here, we have a very faint overlay of our histogram. So it's it's a little compressed, but it's the same thing. So if I want to select, I know something in like the, the lightest parts of the black range, that's probably right about here on my curve, right about there. So if I want to darken that just a tiny bit, I can do that just by uh, selecting, dropping a point there and just pulling it downward a very tiny bit. It's a very subtle change. You can see there's before and after. We're just boosting the brightness of the general highlights across the image and maintaining the darkness of the shadows thus far. Let's go here. We've got our, all of our different color channels. Let's go to the red channel and let's pull a little cyan into the image. So we'll, we'll place a point right down here and we'll just pull down a little bit, pulling down, pulling, uh, pushing up, pushes red into the image as you see, but the opposite of red is cyan. So if we pull down, we get a cyan cast. We're going to go very subtle you know, very subtle as we always do. So there's before, there's after. We're adding a little bit of that cyan color. Adds a little bit more of that kind of, you know, creepiness to it. Uh, let's go to the green channel. And in the very shadows here, we're going to drop a little magenta. Uh, and then I think we're very quickly going to pull back to just kind of like a normal. We don't want to add too much green to the highlights. We're just mainly looking to add just a little kiss of magenta to the shadows. Again, there's before, there's after. We're really building out this color grade a little bit. And then I think over here, we'll go to the blue channel. And in the blue channel... Uh, we're, we're just going to look to add the opposite of blue is yellow. So if we obviously push up, you get a lot of blue, but you pull down, you're going to get a lot of yellow. I'm going to just double click this to get rid of that point. Uh, we want to place a point probably somewhere right around here and just pull downward a little bit. It's just going to add a little bit of yellow to the darker parts of the image. All right. So overall our tone curve, bef there's before there's after we're just, we're increasing the contrast a very little bit making sure we bump our highlights a little bit and introducing a little bit of color into the shadows. Um, I kind of, kind of dig it. So I'm going to close tone curve there and let's move down to split toning. We could play around with HSL as well, uh, but you know, I, I don't know. I don't want to get too mixed up in HSL uh, in this image. It's it's almost a monochromatic image. So I'm not too concerned about, you know, like making sure the color is really popping off the clock. If anything, we want those colors to be subtle and subdued. So the whole image has this very sublime, very flat, but beautiful feel to it. I'm going to come over here to split toning and there's some cool things you can do with split toning. If you hold down your alter option key, number one, you get a reset button. So if you need, if you make like some crazy changes to highlights, we can just say, boom, reset highlights and, and the highlights get reset. But also if you hold down your alter option key and begin dragging the hue, you're going to see the part of the image that is affected and sort of what that color looks maxed out to 100%. So I can go to like blue, right? And you can see there's what it looks like on the image. Not really what I want. I want some kind of subtle orange highlight, like something like that. Uh, but 
I don't want to bring the saturation up to 100. I want the saturation to be pretty low. You know, I'll not leave it around like 15. Again, there's before, there's after. It's a very, very subtle change. And then here with shadows, we can do the same thing. You can see shadows make up a much greater part of the image, so there's going to be a much stronger change. Uh, and here, I think I'll go with kind of like a dark, almost midnight blue, and we'll boost the saturation of that in the shadows. See if we go too far, it starts to look too blue. We'll go subtle. We'll leave it around like 8 to 10. I'll, I'll go with 8, and that's probably cool. So that is our split toning. And then I think we'll also come down here and play around with camera calibration. And we can try a number of things. We're working with the profile Adobe Standard, but if we check out something like camera neutral, camera neutral actually makes the image more flat. Now, in this case, it might actually be too flat at that point, so we'll probably stick with Adobe Standard. But let's try, for instance, pushing some, uh, some magenta tint into the shadows. That's kind of cool, right? See, there's before, there's after. See how it's just kind of like really, chalks everything up, makes it a little bit heavier. And let's shift the red hue a little bit. Let's shift it over toward the pink, maybe like negative 15-ish, and then we'll desaturate the reds overall. I'm not, you know, taking them down to zero. I'll take it down to like negative 25, negative 30, somewhere around there. And I think I'll try to boost the overall green primary color. You can see if we push that up what it looks like. It's actually pretty cool. It brings some nice color into the front of the desk and maybe to the sort of the darker shadowy parts of his skin. So pushing that up to plus 40, plus 50, something right around there looks pretty good. And last but not least, we'll mess, mess around with blue primary. If I shift it way over to the uh, left, it looks really pink. And way to the right, it looks really green. I think I'll introduce a little bit of pink, help balance out some of that cyan that we messed around with and then we'll try to boost the overall brightness or excuse me the overall saturation of the blue channel quite a bit so i'm gonna go like plus 85 right that looks that looks about right i'm gonna shut off my camera calibration there's before and there it is after so you can see how camera calibration really kind of pull things together uh pulls this whole thing together for us as well uh, we can also go in and do some lens correction if we go to like manual here we can change the distortion right so we could like pull this back a little bit something like that and we could also tick on constrain crop, which will make sure that Lightroom is always cropping the image. But you can see if we do it too severely, like over here, this just looks really bad where it's very obviously a bow in the shelf. So I don't know that I'm, I want to do much in the way of lens correction. If anything, I might end up pushing it out the other way. Uh, just a couple clicks toward me. That's pretty cool. I'll collapse lens correction and just we can do a quick before and after. There's before, there's after. So we just bumped it out toward us a little bit. And then under detail, we can use our little loop tool here. Make sure we select his face. We're seeing a nice close-up of his face there and we can just boost the sharpness so i can drag sharpness up to like 90 maybe increase the radius a little bit if you hold down your alter option key you can really see what the radius is going to attack depending on how big or small you make it and also you can work with a one-to-one -one view so just hit one-to-one -one up there that's going to zoom you if you will to 100 percent so we can hold down our alt or option key again radius and we can say yeah you know what those are our good edges that's pretty cool and then in terms of detail again you can hold down alter option and see uh, exactly what the detail is doing i'm going to reduce detail quite a bit maybe just leave it around 15 and then masking is going to show you what bits actually receive sharpness so we really only want the edges to get sharpness uh, so the the white areas here this is sort of the mask on the fly the black areas don't get any sharpness uh, the white areas get full sharpness and every shade of gray in between gets a varying level of sharpness so we can say you know like right about there probably looks good i'm going to go back to the fit option up here uh, and i'm going to hold down my alter option key on the masking thing once more yeah and we can see the edges of the books are all getting a little sharpness but like the dark shadowy areas of solid color on the front of the desk right watch that they're that's solid black it's not getting any sharpening except where there actually are edges so that's really really great there's before our sharpness, there's after our sharpness, and I should probably zoom into 100% so we can actually see it. There's with the sharpness, shut it off, and there's before the sharpness. So the sharpness makes uh, quite a big difference. And really, we can go back to fit here. If you did want to do something like the kind of milky black and white I have here, uh, we could do something like that fairly easily. Go up to basic, convert it to a black and white by hitting black and white. We would have to dump our split toning, so hold down alter option and just reset the highlights and the shadows. Uh, we would probably also want to get rid of what we've done here in the tone curve, so you could just well, you could just shut that off with the little switch, honestly. Uh, and then, you know, come through with basic and probably increase the contrast a little bit. Maybe boost the overall exposure a little bit. I probably should have created a virtual copy here before I did this. But, you know, hey, uh, when you think about these things after the fact. Uh, decrease the blacks a little bit. You know what? I do have to turn tone curve back on. So I'm going to turn it on. I'm going to speed through here and just reset all of this stuff. I'll go back to the green. Double click on that. Go to green. Double click that. And when I jump up here to RGB, I can just double click on these points to reset them. And the thing I'm most concerned with here is just, you know, anchor a point here just past the shadows and then take the actual black point and boost it. So we'll boost that black point just kind of like that. I'll shift this bottom point over and then I'm going to make, maybe make another point here to just brighten up those areas in the middle, something kind of like that. 
need to brighten up my overall shadows a little bit, something like that. Looks good. Probably need a little bit more contrast at this point, something like so. Increase the white's brightness a little bit, maybe decrease the shadows a little bit more. And, you know, I don't know, you can get kind of an interesting kind of flat but faded, you know, milky, smoothish black and white photo as well. So that's really it for this tutorial. That's how you can go and create a cinematic frame. And I also threw in that little black and white conversion there at the end just because why not, right? We're here. We're doing this work. We're doing this thing. So why not take it a step further like we almost always do? So if you've enjoyed this video, again, drop a comment down below or leave a little like on the video. Also, make sure you subscribe to my channel so you never miss another video in the future. That sounds like a great plan to me for creating a single cinematic frame image in Lightroom using the basic, the curve, split tone, and camera calibration, and cropping, and this black and white stuff, and so much more. That's it. Get it? Got it? Good. Nathaniel Dodson, tutvid.com. I'll catch you in the next one.